Hello everyone, hello everybody, this is Froin Solstice 25 Winter Solstice 8. And for the f first time ever on camera, I'm basically on my char. At least I think this is the first time ever, I'm not really sure. But yeah, today I'm going to talk a bit about the Firebrand. The Firebrand comes from the Guardian class. And the... I would say it's quite interesting, really. So for starters, you'll notice the weapon we get for Firebrand is the axe. It's just a one-handed axe for main hand. Whoops. That was my bad. <laughs> I forgot I wasn't going to be turning while I move forward. Welp. This is my life now. It is quite wet. I don't like it at all. Sticks in my fur. But yeah, aside from the new weapon, something noteworthy is that the Firebrand <laughs> lives up to its name quite well and performs a half-decent amount of burn. Or actually, really, a lot of burn, if specced correctly for it. That one causes bleed, this causes bleed and burn. Yeah, the skills are quite visually interesting, but it gets cooler, <laughs> at least when it comes to the skills. Let's start with the Tome of Justice. So the Tome of Justice is where all of the real burns start coming in. Like, there is lots and lots of different burn skills for the Guardian. Let's see. Chapter 1. Fueled by tales of desolation in Istan. Incite a great swelling of heat before you. Let's see that one more time. Alright. Whoops, I started that on accident. Igniting burst. Ignite the air around you in an expanding burst. Heated rebuke. Call forth a heated vortex to collapse your enemies together. So this is basically a thing to... It should be... It's basically CC. And it affects groups of enemies, basically. Looks like it affects up to five enemies, perhaps? So yeah, pull them all into one location, start burning. Scorched Aftermath. Detail the suffering in fire and blood. Inflicted during Vabu Vabby's occupation. So, essentially, this is a casting out of a short radius f from the user. Basically, 2000, a decent amount of damage, decent startup on bleeding stack, 
and a stack of burning. Anything inside that will basically feel that. And then we have Ashes of the Just. Recall the memory of fallen heroes granting allies the searing blades of justice. So my next attack will basically burn with justice, okay. So it is a buff. And it lasts for a few seconds. Okay. But yeah, that's one of the big differences with how the F1 through F3 skills work as a firebrand. <coughs> you get an ammo of pages, tome pages, with whichever skill you're using, which is a, of a category. So the first one, F1, is of like burns and more combat oriented. The second one, F2, is more heal related. Let's see, this one just causes regen for me and allies On the men. of a proximity. Let's see. This one is another cast of regen, basically. And causes more healing per conditions being removed. And it can remove up to three conditions. That's pretty good. Okay, then we have this one. This one gives endurance regeneration, tip standard regeneration, and swiftness. On the mend. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see. This one grants healing, swiftness, and regen. So yeah, basically this whole little section is just mostly heals. Let's see, regen, increased heal effectiveness by 33%. Conditions converted into boons. Oh, cool. So basically, if you have like conditions on you, like bleed or something, it'll turn those into something else. But yeah, then this third one is support related things. Grants protection, stability, swiftness, and I guess. Let's see, this one taunts an enemy into involuntary attacks, which means <laughs> basically they would only be able to use their one skill and charge at an enemy. They wouldn't be able to use any other like skills at all. It will also grant me protection. So it's like, I will have their aggro. And I will be a little more defended. So I'd be like a bit more of like a tanky team player sort of thing. <coughs> Let's see. This one, I believe, that plain and simple, is a shield and gives me protection. And it reflects projectiles. See protection resistance. I really like that. <laughs> resistance, resistance, resistance. 
So with resistance, you're not affected by condition damage like burn, bleed, whatever. That would be good for those high stacker to types in like PvP, I'm sure. By the looks of things. That's not just good for you, but it's good on like allies who might also be getting just totally obliterated with stuff like that. In fact, I'm pretty sure all of these affect you and allies. Well, actually, maybe not this one. Just mostly yourself. Let's see. I guess protection... Gives me 300 toughness. Oh my. Retaliation. Basically damage you would be taking goes back at the uh, attacker. Instability. Yeah, not bad at all. That's the four one. Retaliation incoming. That's the five one. Yeah, I just like how this one looks quite a lot. Swiftly. I think they'll do it with the one through five skill related things. And last but not least, we have our 0 through 6 keys for our new utility skills. Utility skills. Utility skills. Anyway, aside from me catching myself being silly in pronunciation. Pronunciation. Anyway, we our utility skills are like us reading from a book, basically. You'll notice there is like a little um, sky rune going on. You'll like see which um, skill is being used, roughly. But when it comes to actually using them, they become an ammo sort of use. Kind of like your F1 through F3 skills. Heal, heal, final heal. Burn, burn, final burn. Weakness and blindness, weakness and blindness, weakness and blindness. It's almost like I'm trying to say Beetlejuice three times. Like, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Anyway. But that's roughly how these skills use. So it's two regular effects and one final effect, basically. That can be useful in its own way, but it can also be a pain in another way. Like for starters, to actually use skills, you have to prepare them ahead of time. <coughs> or you might have a hard time finding like the time to use them. And you can practically load them up f for quite a long time, really. I don't know how long until they, if they do reset or something, or don't. I haven't actually tested that, but that's roughly how those work. No, 
Now let's give this a uh, more real in field test. I'd say it's definitely very interesting, <coughs> but something I'm not too used to trying for is condition damage. I guess let's try that another time here. That was a little more successful. Where do you just... There he is. If they stink at hitting you, you basically just maul them. Really. Then while you're mauling them, you're inflicting, like, stacks of bleed and burn. You can also use your skills a bit while you're starting up these other ones, apparently. 
so it's not too much of a limitation. So yeah, realistically, that's not bad at all. As long as you're not being too panicky while you're pressing these to use the skills, you can pick up pretty well. Like, I was fumbling around a bit like an idiot, but I was still doing half-decently well in survivability. So yeah, I think I could really get into trying this a little bit more. Only you can take this off my hands. So let's start talking about the map now. So we're currently in Crystal Oasis. This is the map essentially. There isn't too much I would say requires particularly like um very many advanced mount factors. But there is a few things that I would say could require them. Or actually does. For example, um, there is a few jackal spots where you need like third tier mastery for the jackal. Like um, over here at this hero point, like right up by it, there is a jackal portal you can go through and it has this... You can actually kind of see the sand trail, actually, on the map. It's this um, discolored, darker line going up and about. But um, basically, up on that trail, it is actually quite up high. And it's a floaty trail of flowy sand, and it looks really cool. Let's see, two my... There is more than just one of these ever. I don't know how specifically more of them there are. But I definitely know there is a few. Or at least two for sure. But um, they usually lead to things. Mostly like loot or an interesting sight so far that I've seen. I've at least seen two. I don't know if there's any others, though. I have not the slightest clue if there's any others. I have not explored that thoroughly. But at the very least, I have seen the one, two. Like, I've seen the one here, and I've seen the one at this hero point. All the way up in space. But space is for another video. Let me tell you, space deserves its own video, in my opinion. But unfortunately, that'd be a short video. <laughs> Not that that particularly matters, but... I would rather not just make a video and be like, SPACE! And then end it. <laughs> But, um, over here there is another sort of jackal location, sort of like a jackal mount puzzle, I would describe it as, where it's like you have to find the correct jackal portals and get to them correctly, like try not to miss them or whatever, like jumps and all those things. <coughs> now you don't actually need the jackal mount to get that mastery point, but it is convenient. Versus trying to scale the side of, like, the rocks and that with a springer. Also, on this map, there is actually quartz crystal nodes. In fact, there's um, a rich one somewhere up in here. And then, in the cavern 2, getting up in there, there is a regular one. So yeah, that is something interesting to note on this map. But, um, 
Something worth mentioning about this area is there is an enemy here that is not quite as seen elsewhere on this map as besides like perhaps this hero point. And that is the Jins. That's D J I N spelt for you. And they are essentially jerks. In this game that I've seen they are like designed off of using an element per like some will be like earth some will be like air some will, will be like fire i'm pretty sure there is water ones but they are essentially like elemental undead jerks from what i've seen an interesting foe to be sure but they are jerks Let's see, what else is worth mentioning? This is worth mentioning, actually. So, f with Griffin Mounts, with Griffin Mastery, there is an interesting thing they started doing for Griffin specifically, is Griffin Courses. And these courses are designed to like test the player and their skill with using the Griffin Mount. There's two kinds of courses. There is... where is the first one? <coughs> that is not it. Is that it? There is the Expert, which is actually the beginning one. And then there is the Griffin Master, which is I would describe as the more advanced one. Like... I don't know if it's supposed to be that way, but Expert is just much easier to me than Master. Like with Master, you're expected a lot more needle threading and trying to figure out how to shave off time. So that's the real difference. Like Master is definitely more difficult. And you're expected a lot more interesting objects obstacles to go by with the master one so yeah that's the main difference between the two, the two. like I could ask around in map chat people wouldn't really have an answer f in the map chat or at least they haven't for me but that's my answer for you specifically but you do need full griffin mastery to actually really be using these because you'll need it for like the dive skills and the rising up on the griffin and all that after a dive. So yeah, there is that as a factor. There is a few sort of newer materials introduced with this expansion. What was this? No, that's not relevant. <coughs> Let's see, these two are some of them. Like, you get these from certain things you salvage or from events. Apparently I get a ton of them. To the point that I actually had to get rid of some. These, I believe, just straight up come from events. I forget if I actually salvaged anything and got these. I think I might have, actually. Though that would have been rare or exotic gears, and I don't always get that. Let's see, there is other things. Taking myself a careful look. Not in there. Not in there. But there's a couple things here, actually. These three things specific. Actually, this whole little bottom row. Like, you can get these coffee beans from merchants, or if, uh, or certain locations might actually just have like random bags of coffee beans you can find. I th think the caffeinated script might actually offer them. <coughs> then there's the um, red lentils. Now you can find these basically everywhere. Like flax on these maps. Let's see the sugar ribs. Hearty sugar ribs. 
It actually kind of mentions where you can kind of get them. Grown in the ch it says grown in a Choya village. I don't know if it's actually specifically to get from there. If you want to just constantly get them naturally, but I personally would just normally find these after certain events. But um, Choya spines. Yeah, it's dropped from Choya, but you can also kind of get them from like events sometimes. As like a random material. Then there's these pungent jacaranda blooms, which comes from my least favorite thing in all of these maps, actually. <coughs> like, the jacaranda are just total jerks to me. I just want to get on top of a hill, and I want to get, I want to switch mounts. Is that too much for me to ask? Can I be left in peace, please, and not be harassed with wind or be smited with lightning? Because <laughs> if I could, that'd be fantastic. Because they don't have to just shoot something at me. They don't have to catch up to me to attack me. No, they just need to look at me and they're able to hit me from there. Like, right away. Like, that's how much I hate them. <laughs> Like, I would prefer a Pocket Raptor at this rate. <laughs> I'm sure a Pocket Raptor would destroy my mount, but I would prefer a Pocket Raptor. <laughs> I'm yet to really see what some of these are actually used for in crafting, but um, at the very least I have been getting them. Obviously, make coffee. And there's like certain foods you can make with this. I've noticed that the buffs actually offer 1% um, all AXP. That says in like in all like game modes or something. <coughs> so that's actually pretty cool. I haven't really seen what these are used for in crafting. I'll probably look into that a little later, but at the very least, we know they're there. Yeah. Off the top of my head, there is three sets of, like, armors you can get from, like, these maps and, like, the materials you get from here. There is the Elon armors. The Elonian armors, I should be more proper about pronouncing. There is one per armor type of like all pieces basically so you could essentially have a full set of them for all the armor kinds here Not exactly bad, but it's not exactly my taste neither. The Sun Spear armors, Sun Spear skins. Was it labeled Sun Spear? Spear Marshal? Spear Marshal. <coughs> Are essentially the improved versions of the Elonian. Like, it's pretty much the Elonian with a little extra decor to the design. Where it's notably more stylish. Then the last set I can think of is the War Beasts, which is just all around quite more annoying to get, apparently. Like, I have a great way to kind of compare them, actually. Just go into the black line trading. Actually, let me collect on that. Of the rebirth. That's not related. What is that? I'll look into that later. A lot of these are skins I already have. 
actually. Let's do this the smart people way. Most expensive first. That. Whatever. Actually, even smarter yet. Boom. As you can see, it is notably more expensive. It is the War Beast skins. Let's see. Of the Cavalier. So I'll have to type that in. No, I don't want to buy that. So yeah, it is notably quite drastically different from the other two skins. It's especially quite notably different with the other armor sets as well. In fact, I want to say the um, light armor set actually has the cooler headpiece, in my opinion. Every map has its own set of bounty boards. Bounty boards are specific to that map, and there's multiple per map. There's a total of three bounty boards on this map. There's one per waypoint, basically, for this map. But that would be a different case scenario per map. Like, let's see. I'm pretty sure it's like one on this area. One over there, and then one over here for the next, for example, and not just one at every single waypoint. <coughs> so that is how they could basically differ. And each bounty board will show a different set of bounties compared to the next. And the bounties visible on them are visible to all players, not just one. As in, what bounties there are there, all players have the ability to see and access. Of driven if there's the one not available, that's because it was already activated and you'd have to wait for it to be able to be activated again to do. So that is roughly how that works. Aside from that, the neat thing about the bounty board is that you can, you don't have to worry as much about the time of getting people there in like a rush. You can just start up a group of enough people to go after a bounty, which is the neat thing. It basically makes doing like, like player trains of doing events and things much more convenient. The unfortunate thing, it isn't, isn't as um, engaging as like stories and like lores and little like small side NPC th journeys going on. With that is like um like a little map meta or something. So there's like no like um, world bosses or anything of the sort. Which, in my opinion, is unfortunate, because those were actually quite fun. But at the same time, it's a little less of a constraint on a player, I would assume. So yeah. Pretty interesting. And a bit of a trade-off thing. Here's essentially the map cool kids table. Where, like, everything is all compressed and stuff into one location.
quite convenient for the player. I'm trying to think what it's called. It's like the the Lily of the Ellen. But yeah, it is quite interesting. You cannot get into here without the invitation. This is the Mystic Forge in here. It is a genie lamp. Pretty neat, in my opinion. It's like, they could have gone really big above and beyond, but they kept it still, like, confined. But not too disappointing, in my opinion. <coughs> Otherwise, up above us, they have placed all of the crafting stations. We have weaponsmith and armorsmith here. Artificing. Cooking. Tailoring, leatherworking, jeweling, huntsmen's. I'm just gonna drop down. Am I missing anything? <coughs> There's a peck, apparently an ectoplasm gambling table here. If I have enough ecto and enough coin, I can essentially just gamble here forever. Something like this. Let's see what I get. Yeah! Well, I mean, that's kind of end this part, but. That's essentially more ecto. Try two. Oh yeah. That's more right. ecto, more coin. Would have been more coin. Would have been more coin. If one of these is worth yeah, it says it's basically seventy to sell. And it would have cost me eighty basically. Let's buy two more. Ecto-wise, I'm not doing too bad. Coin-wise, I am kind of losing. <laughs> <coughs> Sell that junk back. I do appreciate the Ecto, though. Oh, yeah. That's my loot. Hmm. This time I actually lost Ecto. And coin. That's me. Bye. Okay, in terms of Ecto, I made a profit. <coughs> but that's hardly a profit, realistically. I'm just ser curious if I can actually oh, yeah. get anything totally mind. big out of this. Lost in Ecto. Is there actually a way to really profit out of this? What? An oh, that's worth a gold. So yeah, I guess there is some possibility to profit. 
It's just very highly luck based. Nothing like the spoils of war. That's not even a spoil. That was just pure loss. <laughs> Another loss. And only by one. Oh yeah, that's my loot. That was a bit better in the gold department. Otherwise, not so much in the ecto department. Ecto wise that wasn't bad. I wonder if magic find affects this at all. Hmm. It's probably going to be like a thing I'm going to have to look into sometime. Something I want them to do is add more little gambling games in. Like this looks like it could actually be something interesting. Let me join you guys. I swear, I got gold. I'm willing to pay. Is there any other gambling games? Like, they could actually, honestly, just put in, like, roulette or something. Could be interesting. I actually want to try. Let me play Dungeons and Dragons with you guys. I know that's not the right dice, but. Why? I want to believe. Oh, kitty. What are you doing? It's like a little cat play area. Me, personally, the way I have access to this is by buying the um, deluxe version of the purchase of this expansion. The purchase gave me this little invitation thing, and I basically get to use this wherever I want, and it's basically a free passage here for all my characters. So if I don't want to have to progress in the story to just uh, get a character here, I can just use that invitation to get a character here, and I could have them work on their mastery or something. Or not mastery, specializations. <coughs> so yeah. Pretty convenient. I find it weird though that there's this crab toss NPC here. Yeah, I think that's about all I have to really talk about for this map for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. But otherwise, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm 41 Solstice 25, Winter Solstice 8. You have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah.